Now, let's talk extractives. Today, we are looking at the contracts in the extractive sector. From the feedback we got, we learned that a lot of people don't understand the contracts in the extractive sector. Some don't even know that government, on our behalf, sign contracts for the different minerals that we have in the country. Is it the business of citizens to know the content of those contracts? How does it affect the revenue that we get from our natural resources? With me in the studio today to talk is my friend and my brother. You're welcome. Well, thank you. Please, mm -hmm. can we get to meet you? Uh, my name is Paul Obu. Um, I work in the extractive sector. Um, by an organization called Publish Call to Pay in Nigeria. It's a global NGO, but I work with the Nigerian um, part of it. And basically, I work in the economic governance sector, um, where uh, how they manage our natural resources. We, we look at it as an uh, unbiased independent uh, to, to make sure the, the stakeholders, the government, the companies do that very well. Uh, that, that's just uh, um, who I am I mean, in the sector. So I've, I've engaged with the sector for some time now, so at least I know one or two things about the sector. Thank you very much, Paul. So you see, we have a uh, capable hands in the house to talk about contracts. So we want to talk about contracts. Contracts in the strategic sector, what is it? Um, contracts is in the extractive sector is um, on the general term we all know what um, uh, contracts are. I mean, both the formal and informal uh, definition of it. It can be written, it can be oral contracts. But basically, in the extractive sector, we have um, a contracts binding between the government. I mean, being the owners of the natural resources and the companies that are engaged to offer services or to explore or to process the uh, uh, extractive uh, the, 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 uh, this in the extractive sector. And when you talk of extractive sector, as we know, I mean, it, in the Nigerian context, we're talking of the oil sector, I mean, oil and gas, as some people call it, and the solid mineral sector. So those are the three ones that will call, uh, uh, will, the natural resource will call it three processes like, that have contracts signed by the government and by uh, uh, third parties or the companies that help process the, 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 the in terms of the exploration, in terms of, across the value chain of the uh, uh, of the sector, exploration, exploitation, processing, sales of crude, uh, refining of crude, those are the sector between the up, the middle and the downstream sector of the economy. So the, it's, it's, it's across chain, there are contracts signed within those chains, I mean within Either licensing, either um, leasing agreements, uh, processing agreements, servicing agreements, a lot of um, uh, contracts signed within that sector mm. uh, of the economy. So, if there are a lot of contracts signed, how come people are complaining they don't have access to those contracts? Uh, it, it, we should know that um, uh, the, the, the way the government operates, have operated over time, the, because of the nature of the industry, have been at OPEC. I mean, there have not been enough transparency in the sector. So most times, the government actually hide those contracts. And, and it, and it seems as it, it, they make it more or less like a technical something that the citizenry, even some people who are experts, can't even read or inter interpret what is in the contract. So and because of some of the clauses in the contract, they tend to hide that. They tend not to make it open, to make it transparent. People don't have access to the contract. So people really don't know what is obtained in the contract. And because... Part of the contract is, there are a lot of other issues there. I mean, we talk of the physical terms, we talk of the financial terms, we talk of the economic, uh, of the uh, environmental terms. I mean, how even the companies engage with the community, those communities are part of the contract. There are a lot of, and contracts are mostly bulky. I mean, it's, it takes an expert actually to interpret and know what is in the content of the contract. And, but, and the important thing is that when you do that, when you are aware of that as a citizen, you're able to look at the parties the government, the companies, are they really doing what is contained in the contract? So it's, you'll be able to question them because you are. that's why they say knowledge is power. You know what is in the contract and you know how to follow them up on that. You know how even among other um, arms of the government like the legislative, they'll be able to perform a good oversight function on what the companies are doing and what the government are doing. Are both parties or uh, the third party are they delivering in, in what uh, they agreed on, on the contract? But what you see is that 
people sign contracts and stop it somewhere. And for 20, mm -hmm. 30 years, they operate as if it's a free field. And the, unfortunately, because of the kind of society we run, people don't really question those things. Even the, the people that sign the contract don't even know what is contained in the contract. We've seen issues. I mean, if you follow the PNI did something that they said the, the, the country should pay mm -hmm. 9.8 billion dollars, mm -hmm. which is almost a quarter of our, our reserve uh, yeah. from one single company. That when if you follow the court procedure of what is going on, you find that these are fictitious people that want to actually uh, and and because the contracts are not open, the contracts are not transparent, people don't really know. People just sign off the, the, the natural uh, natural resources of the country without looking at the nitty gritty, the line items in the contract. As I said, contracts are always bulky. Mm. You need an expert to look at what the line items and find out clauses. And unfortunately, this is not only obtainable in the, in the extractive sector. Well, I mean, currently we are talking of what the Chinese, mm. the Chinese contract. So it's, 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 it's almost everywhere. It's, if you follow the what's have been going on in the Malabu, uh, uh, this uh, trial in Italy, for it's mm -hmm. still, Boys that yeah. use of not knowing what is contained in the contract and the parties not actually following up what is contained in the contract. That and as a, as a citizen, even as an expert, you don't know what is there for you to actually question what is going on there, what is going on in the sector. So because of that, it's open for corruption, it's open for abuse, it's open for a lot of things in the sector. Mm -hmm. So if you can get the, that contract transparency, I mean, right, with the current beneficial ownership, you seem to be closing up the, uh, the, getting up some of the knots in the sector to be able to have a transparent sector that benefit the government, benefit the companies, benefit the citizens and benefit everybody. Hmm. Beneficial ownership, that's going to be another topic for another day. But still on, still on the issue of, uh, of, uh, of contracts, if you say that contracts are to be interpreted by experts, so what's the role in there for citizens? Uh, experts are still part of the citizens. Exactly. Uh, I mean, it's, let's not take it. Um, when you mean as, when you mention experts, they are not outside the society. Mm -hmm. So everything that affects the country affects the society, affects them equally. Exactly. So when when they get that right, they, what they have to do is one either to help the citizens interpret the contract. And if, when you look at the contract transparency issue, what it, it actually aims it tends to do is that one simplify those contracts, make them available, make them in a readable format so that everybody can easily access it. And people that are experts can actually teach other civil society, uh, I mean, build the capacity of the citizen or the civil society experts on those particular areas that consign them that they can actually raise issues and questions on. I mean, there, there's an advocacy on that part. How do you simplify those terms? That, and I mean, it's to ABC English, so every other person will know what it is. I mean, mm. if you are signing contracts on the environmental sector in my, in my as a host community, and you said so, 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 as the social responsibility of the government, that so, so shouldn't happen within that um, um, uh, operating environment. That if there is a leak, if there is gas leakage, if there is only spillage, you tackle those to the citizenry. Those they know when there is gas. When there's mm. gas leaking, don't know when when there's already spilling. Don't when, they know when there's gas flowing. They can easily raise that issue up and look at if there's a penalty or there's anything that concerns you that they know the regulatory authorities to report that to, to as a follow up. So that, I mean, it's, as I said, even as an expert, as it, they will all come from somewhere. There are cities, mm. there are people from the local communities that have direct bearing or links link with us. So if assuming if it's an environmental issue or a pollution, it affects you. Even wherever you are, and it's, it's effect, so it's, mm. and it's affect the livelihood of those people. And mm. if you are an independent person, that person will still be calling on you to send mm. them money or any other thing. Um, that that's true. You you mentioned the issues around the um, regulatory agencies. Mm. So when it comes to contracts in the extractive industry, who who should, for instance, you have an extractive industry or a company working within your area, mm. and you feel what they are doing is wrong, and maybe it could be because of the the contract that they signed with government that you are not aware of, but you feel that this is affecting you. Which are the um, regulatory agencies that you should do? It? And what do you mean by regulatory agencies? I mean, agencies that over, have oversight, agencies mm. that oversee those um, operations, that oversee those contracts, that oversee... So, when you look at um, uh, the oil and gas sector, you find that in terms of licensing, the initial exploratory license they give you, or even this in its 
domicile in an organization like DPR, which mm -hmm. is a, a subset of, I mean, uh, a department under the Ministry of Petroleum Resources. Then equally in the, in the, in the um, solid mineral sector, and some of the contracts in the oil and gas sector are mostly from NNPC, mm -hmm. which is a national oil, mm -hmm. um, oil company. Then the Federal Ministry of uh, uh, Petroleum Resources, as I mentioned earlier, and if you talk of the solid mineral sector, you talk of the uh, Ministry of Solid Mineral and the MCO, that's the Cadence of those yeah. are regulatory organs. But when you talk of something like oil uh, pollution and the rest of them, then you talk of people like Nostra and Co. That oversee that are that have an oversight function that are more or less like regulatory organizations or agencies to monitor. The level of oil spillage and how tribes have to control uh, those things. So there are, there are, there are um, two or three uh, regulatory agencies, but they all work in unison. They all work in mm. the same uh, sector to make sure uh, they regulate the sector very well.